What's up everybody, Arg the Pirate here, and today we're going to talk about the offlane. The offlane is one of the dangerous positions to play in the game, because most of the time it's a 2v1 lane, meaning you will be facing a carry and a support hero. And if you are new to the offlane, I can really only recommend one hero, and of course that hero is Greystone. Greystone is an off-lane machine. He's great at pushing lanes and all around being just really hard to take down as well as super annoying. There are a lot of other off-lane heroes, but Greystone is the easiest to pick up while you're still learning how to off-lane properly. Now, let's talk about Greystone's kit. Greystone has two passive abilities, the first being Deflect. Deflect blocks a single basic attack. This is great when you're going against the ADC. I would recommend picking up and concentrating on this ability first. Assault the Gates is a leap that can go as far as a thousand units. This is great for escaping early game, I would keep this ability and use it as an escape. I would not go offensively with this ability. Make Way is Greystone's AoE and is the ability that really allows him to do a great wave clear. Now, this ability doesn't really come alive until after you get level 5 and you can really start staying in the minion wave. Lastly, Greystone's ultimate is Reforged. When Greystone dies, he turns to stone, and all enemies within 900 units are slowed. After 3 seconds, Greystone re-enters his body and does AoE damage. This is great and allows him to be extra aggressive once he hits level 5, but this ability is on a fairly long cooldown at the first and second level, so make sure to use it at the correct time and don't just let the enemies take it away from you. The offlaner needs some sort of sustain, so using the beginner's deck, pick up the scout's ward healing potion and mana potion. The offlaner benefits the most from player level, which Greystone's ultimate allows him to be a very big threat and a real pain to deal with at early levels. Now this jungle camp is the offlaner's camp. You can take it if you want, but with the beginner's deck, I would recommend just staying in the lane because you really don't have any sort of sustain other than that health potion. Make sure to put a ward up because the off lane is the easiest lane to be ganked in because it's already a 2v1 and if the enemy jungler decides to come over there and harass you a little bit, then it's a 3v1 and it is very easy to die. So you want to keep as much vision on that jungle as you can. Now this is a bot game so I'm playing as well as I can, but the reason I did not go help that Grux is because as the offlaner I don't want to have any damage until the minions start fighting. And if you notice, I'm not going for last hits. I'm standing close enough to get experience for when my minions kill one of their minions. But I am staying back and just poking going in every once in a while. Especially with this beginner's deck, you have very little sustain, so you want to stay as safe as possible. Now, where I am now, pushed up towards the front of the tower, is not always a safe position, because the enemies can still hit me without getting that tower to poke back at them. So just be aware and just try to defend this tower as best you can. Now the one thing every offlaner needs to know is your tower is going to fall. Period. Do not be worried about your tier 1 offlane tower. It actually makes it easier for you 
to farm when your tower falls. Now, one great advantage for the offlane hero is since you are in a 2v1 lane, you will level twice as fast as the enemies. So they're going to be level three and a half when you hit level five. This makes you very, very threatening because you are at a higher level and typically they haven't gone back yet when you hit level five. So you are able to really push back at the enemies. Now, if you notice Grux comes in here, I'm going to just concentrate on the minions. I don't want to take any more damage. I want to get these minions down and have a little more time to farm before I have to go back. I'm already one health potion down and I'm less than half health. If I can get to level five before I have to back, this is going to make my job a lot easier. Now, besides knowing your tower's going to fall, the only other piece of advice that you must know is you should never die for your tier one tower. And to be quite honest, you should never die before you hit level five. If you have a quarter health and no more health potions, and the enemies pushed up very far to your tower, do like I'm doing right now. I'm pinging I need help, defend left lane, and stay in it as much as you can. If you don't have any sort of rotation like I'm not getting right now, just leave. If you're able to get the minions out of the tower, that's great, but if you notice, I'm not pushing up at all. I am staying in my tower because I do not want to die. Early game deaths are not the end of the world, but the thing about the offlane is when you die, you allow the carry and the support to catch up to your level. So say you're level four when you die and they're level three, when you come back, they might be the same level as you, and they'll get their ultimates when you get yours. And when that happens, you're not able to really force them back and kind of refresh your lane. Again, I see a big wave coming. There's three of the enemy heroes right here, and I ping, I need help. You know, I, I don't want to lose this lane, but like I said, it is not the biggest thing if I lose this lane. I would rather lose this lane than lose my life. Now, right here, I am very close to level 5. I am very close to dying, though. So, I need to be very careful, clear these waves out, and as soon as I hit level 5, I can really push the enemy back. And this is also going to allow me to get back to the tower, spin my points and things like that. If you notice, I got my ultimate, I was able to get in there, get a kill on their support, and then I'm able to run around, grab their gold buff, and retreat back to my tower. Now, with Greystone's jump ability, you're able to get up here and get this gold buff. This is great for, he, for the enemy team that isn't paying as much attention to the gold buff as they should. 300 CXP for the offlaner in this early game is great since you're, it's very hard to get last hits on minions. Now, as the offlaner, you really don't want to rotate to other lanes. You want to stay in this lane, protect your tower, and try to down the enemy's tier one tower. You really want to get the, get their tower down before you have any sort of rotation. Your off lane is the enemy team's safe lane. And by keeping constant pressure on this lane, you're going to keep the ADC from being able to rotate around once they down your tower. Now, this is more of a basic tactic. A lot of more advanced teams work around this a lot differently. If you notice here, a siege minion is in my tower. 
that siege minion goes straight for the tower, don't forget. So if you ever see a siege minion in your tower, kill him first. This saves a lot of damage from happening to your tower. Now Greystone is the best solo lane pusher in my opinion because he can keep constant pressure on a lane and force enemies to rotate to him but it's very hard for just a single enemy to kill Greystone. With his reforge and his great escape mechanic he's able to just stay in lane and keep that pressure up. Now you can go and help team fights as Greystone, but in all honesty, Greystone does not have the best team fight potential. His ultimate is really the only sort of CC that he has. Most enemies just completely ignore him because if he's doing a damage build, he does a lot of damage. And if he's doing a tank build, it's really, really hard to kill him. Greystone offers the most to his team by constantly pushing lanes. And this makes him a great off laner and just a great hero in general. Now, I know this is really a beginner's off lane guide, and it's kind of turned into a hey, Greystone guide. But Greystone really is the easiest hero to off lane with and he's very good at offlaning. Now since I only covered one hero for the offlane, I have a little bit extra time to talk about a few points and reminders to the newer heroes. Now, the number one thing is to remember is try not to die. Dying as the offlaner is never worth your tower. Now, at the same time, Dying for your tower is not worth it either. But if they get an early game pick on you, like you run out into the lane and you're just out of position and they kill you, they're going to be able to put a large amount of damage on you, especially since the jungler's not going to be able to rotate to you for a while because he's got to do jungle things. If your jungler is really in tuned with what he's doing, I would expect to gank around two and a half to three minutes. If not, you're gonna be on your own, so try not to take any poke damage and try not to die because the longer you can keep damage off of the tower, the better. Now, it's also way better to go back to tower than to die and go back to tower. Even though the times are about the same, it only takes seven seconds to respawn, and it probably takes longer than that to actually run to a safe position and teleport back. By not dying, you're not allowing that ADC to get that advantage in card XP. So just remember, try your best not to die but don't die for your tower. Now in PvP matches, most of the time when people down a tower, they turn around and run away. This is just because most of the time in PvP matches, when someone downs a tower, the whole team rotates on them. Now this is really good for you. If the support and the ADC leave you alone with their minion wave at your tower, slow farm it. Now this means only getting last hits and it seems like it takes forever but don't worry about that because you're starving their ADC and their support from experience and they're going to have to go into someone else's lane or into the jungle to get that. By starving the ADC in the support and making them where they actually affect another teammate of theirs, you're doing your job well. This slow push is also going to allow your minion wave to stack up, and you might actually get a very, very strong counter push into the enemy's tower. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for my sixth and final video in this beginner's series. 
Now, if you would like to see more kind of advanced tactics, be sure to let me know. I'm actually thinking about making a series on more advanced tactics anyways. And if you have any questions about the off lane or, you know, what heroes other than Greystone could I use, just leave me a comment and I'll be more than happy to get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, show me some love, leave me a comment, and tell me what I can improve on. And as always, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next video.